Welcome Algebra 1 students to another Readings Review video. This is the Algebra 1 Common Core January 2017 Regents Exam. These are going to be the solutions for Part 1, questions 1 through 12. So uh, this is the first half of the multiple choice section. And uh, let's just talk about a few things first before we get started. If you're here to copy my answers, please don't do it. Don't cheat. Try the problems on your own. Do them. I promise you, you'll go, you will get better if you at least attempt the problems, see where you went wrong, and then you come back and um, correct your problems. But if you're here to check your answers or need a little bit of guidance, you've come to the right place. Hit that subscribe button down below and make sure that you visit my website at www.nysmathreadingsprep.com. And I use the TI Inspire CX calculator for Algebra 1. Without further ado, let's get started. Here we go. Number one. Which expression is equivalent to 16x squared minus 36? So by now, you should understand that the order of factoring is GCF followed by the difference of two perfect squares followed by the trinomial method. So when we're looking at this, we have to determine, well, is there a greatest common factor? And yeah, there is. The number 4 can go into 16 and 36. So what your goal is first to take out a 4, and you're left with... 4x squared minus 9. Now, we just took care of the uh, GCF here, so that's done. Do we have the difference of two perfect squares somewhere? Absolutely we do, right here. That is the difference of two perfect squares. We could set up our double bubble, so we get 4 times, take the square root of 4, which is 2, take the square root of x, which is x, take the square root of 9, which is 3. So we have 2x and 3, 2x and 3. When you do the difference of two perfect squares, it's always a plus minus. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is your answer, which is going to be choice two. All right, moving on to number two. What is the solution set for the equation x minus two, x minus a equals zero? So all you need to do is you need to set these binomials equal to zero. That's it. Draw your t-bar. You get x minus two equals zero, x minus a equals zero. You're going to add that two on both sides. We get x equals positive 2, and you're going to add the a on both sides over here, and you get x is equal to positive a. So your solution set is going to be 2 and a, which is going to be choice 3. All right, moving along. Number 3, analysis of data from a statistical study shows a linear relationship with, a, with the data, um, sorry, in the data with a correlation coefficient of negative 0.524. Which statement best summarizes this result? So what you need to understand is that the correlation coefficient, the correlation coefficient lies between two numbers. Coefficient. Okay, so it lies between two numbers. Negative 1, which is less than or equal to r, which is less than or equal to 1. It lies between in, in between those two numbers. If it is negative 1 or positive 1, it is considered a perfect fit. And if r is equal to 0, this means that there is no correlation between the variables. Now, if we go back to what we're looking at here, it says negative 0.524. Well, that means that it is negative, so we have a negative correlation. Um, and it's, let's see, there's a strong positive correlation. No, positive makes no sense. Negative works. Positive makes no sense. Negative works. Now, Negative 0.524, that's really not that strong of a correlation. It, it's it's kind of, I mean, you could see a pattern either going up or down. In this case, it's negative. You could see some sort of pattern, but not its entire, not in its entirety. So the answer is going to be choice four. There's a moderate correlation between the variables. Strong means that it is close to the number negative one, which in this case, it's really not. It's kind of midway between zero and negative one. Okay, number four. Boyle's law involves the pressure and volume of gas in a container. It could be represented by the formula P1V1 equals P2V2. When the formula is solved for P2, the result is what? So all we need to do is we take uh, P1V1, and we have equal P2V2, and you're trying to solve for P of 2. So to solve for P of 2, since P of 2 is being multiplied by V of 2, you just divide by V of 2 on both sides. Those cancel you get P of 2 is equal to P1V1 over V2. And ladies and gentlemen, that is your answer. That is going to be choice 3. All right, moving on. Number 5. 
The ratio, uh, sorry, the radio station did a survey to determine what kind of music to play by taking a sample of middle school, high school, and college students. They were asked which of the three different types of music they prefer on the radio. Hip-hop, alternative, or classic rock. What is alternative music? I don't know what that is. The results are summarized in the table below. What percentage of college students prefer classic rock? So we're looking at classic rock. We're looking at 14, the number 14, because that's how many college students like classic rock. Now, there's 14 people that like classic rock in college. Well, how many college students were surveyed? Well, there were a total of 50 college students that were surveyed. So all you need to do is you need to take 14 and divide that by the number 50. And you were going to get 0.28. So that means that 0.28, or that's the same thing as saying 28% of the people in college like classic rock. So the answer for number five is going to be uh, choice two. All right, number six. Which function has the zeros negative four and two? When it says zeros, that means that it crosses the x-axis at these points. All right, so these are the values where it crosses the x-axis. So just because they have these equations and these graphs, let's take a look at the graphs first. Maybe the graph is the answer immediately. It says zeros of negative four and two. Well, this shows right here. This shows x equals negative two. This is showing x equals positive four. It's shown as opposites. Choice two makes no sense. This is showing x equals negative four. Oops. This is showing x equals negative four, and this is showing x equals two. Ah, well, that's your answer. Choice four. Those are the zeros of negative four and two. We didn't even have, we didn't even have to do choices one and three because they're wrong anyway. All right, number seven. Which expression is equivalent to two times? 3g minus 4 minus 8g plus 3. So what we do is we take 2 times 3g minus 4, and we are going to distribute that 2 in those parentheses. Okay? So take the 2, boom, boom, distribute it in, so we get 6g minus 8. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there's a negative here. You need to distribute that negative in. That's your keep change change idea of expressions. So we get negative 8g minus 3. Now we just combine like terms, 6g minus 8g, that's negative 2g, negative 8 minus 3 is negative 11. So that is going to be choice 4 for question number 7. All right, this is kind of an easy multiple choice so far. Would you agree? Maybe a little bit. All right, number 8. In 2014, the cost to mail a letter was 49 cents for up to one ounce. Every additional ounce costs 21 cents. Which recursive function could be used to determine the cost of a three ounce letter in cents? So first and foremost, you need to understand that a sub one is 49 cents, which is just point four. Well, actually, all of these equations are in terms of cents. So a sub one has to be 49. So if you know that a sub one is 49, you can actually just simplify it. Oh, boom, boom, boom. Choice one's the answer because the first term has to be 49 cents. That's your first ounce. And every additional ounce is you're adding 21 cents. And that is it. All right. Question number eight is done. Move, moving on to number nine. Um, a car leaves Albany, New York and travels west towards Buffalo, New York. The equation D equals 280 minus 59T can be used to represent the distance D from Buffalo after T hours. In this equation, 59 represents the what? So D represents the total distance, okay? D represents the total distance. Um, 280 represents um, the, well, this represents 280 miles away, meaning that Albany is 280 miles from Buffalo. So this is the total, actually, this could be represented by the total distance left, left remaining in the trip. T is in time. 59, or the negative 59, that is the speed that you were going. So 59 represents the speed of the car. That is going to be choice two. You to take 280 miles minus 59 times T, which is in hours, that's miles per hour. So you just subtract whatever you have. Number 10, Faith wants to use the formula C of F equals 5 ninths times F minus 32 to convert degrees Fahrenheit F to degrees Celsius C of F. 
if Faith calculated C of 68, what would her result be? So all you need to do is you need to take 68 and you're going to plug it in for F. Okay, so we get C of 68 is equal to 5 ninths, right? 5 ninths times 68 minus 32. We then get 5 ninths times 68 minus 32. That is going to be, let's see, 68 minus 32. That's going to be 36. So we take 5 ninths of 36. That is going to be equivalent to 20. So um, that is the degree measurement, but, care, but be careful. 68, that is F, Fahrenheit. This is going to be 20 degrees Celsius. So your answer for this one is going to be choice one. Okay, moving on. Number 11, which scenario represents exponential growth? Okay, a water tank is filled at a rate of two gallons per minute. No, that is showing a constant rate of change. So this is linear because after the first minute, there's two gallons. After the second minute, that's, there's now four gallons. After the third minute, there's six gallons. You kind of get the idea. You're increasing each minute by two gallons. The vine grows six inches a week. No, that's linear because every single week it's increasing by six inches. A species of fly doubles in population every month during the summer. Yeah, that's your answer because it's doubling. That is the scale factor of two. Let's just say you have one fly. It doubles to two, then it doubles to four, then eight, then 16, then 32, then 64, then 128, then 256. It, it skyrockets, it increases exponentially. Choice four, this is saying a car increases its distance from a garage as it travels a constant constant speed. That that's that's linear. So all of these are linear. Choice three clearly shows exponential growth. All right, that's how you do question number eleven. Moving on to the last one of the video, number twelve. What is the minimum value of the function y equals the absolute value of x plus three minus two? What tripped people up is the minimum value is your y value. It is the it's the vertical distance on the graph. So if I were to go to my graph page and graph the absolute value of x plus 3 minus 2, we get this. Your y value, which is at its minimum, so do menu, analyze, graph, minimum, this is the graph negative 3, negative 2. So ladies and gentlemen, your minimum value is negative 2, which is going to be choice, uh, choice 1. That's the minimum value. That's your y value. Yes. Yes, it is. Negative two. All right. And that is the conclusion of this video. I hope that it helped. Make sure that you visit my website at www.nysmathreadersprep.com and hit that subscribe button down below. And I hope to see you soon.